day. Good evening, President Graziano, members of Richmond City Council. My name is Sullivan Persinger. I'm a citizen of Richmond, Virginia. I'd also like to speak in opposition to this project. That gentleman that was here before you, uh, the African American gentleman, that's Ronald Stallings. His father purchased the property on August 5th, 1982, for $37,500. Is currently assessed at five hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars. It's been in the fa this family's hands for twenty two years. It's in a blighted condition, and you're proposing to reward that behavior. Uh, an article in the, the Examiner.com, written by uh, Mr. Graves, a former uh, advisor to Mayor Wilder, uh, cites Stallings and his sister Wanda as owners of Walker Road Partnerships. It states their portfolio includes. 100 properties. Their father at one time owned 140 properties. Uh, Stalin's properties have been cited hundreds of times for code violations. Be because this man wants to do all the development himself, he's actually retarding the, the redevelopment of Jackson Ward by hoarding property, contributing to urban blight, and this he proposed to reward with a $600,000 $600, gift from promises made in 2004 by Calvin Jameson. Council has the power to deny this money right here tonight by voting no on this item. Uh, at the uh, Finance Committee meeting last Thursday, I uh, requested that Mr. Robertson abstain from the vote because she had received campaign contributions from the developer. Uh, she did not abstain from voting, and the vote was two to one in support of, of sending it here. So if she would have abstained, it would have been one to one to one. Uh, and I'd like to request Ms. Robertson to abstain from voting tonight. Uh, the, her campaign contribution was only $100, but uh, conflicts of interest involve perceptions of potential conflicts of interest. It's hard to imagine that a $100 campaign donation would yield a $600,000 uh, gift from the city. But uh, this $600,000 portion is, represents 5% of the project's estimated uh, $12.1 million. Uh, to, to renovate. This is a for-profit project. And uh, I'm further concerned because $319,000 of this money comes from a pot of money that's been accumulating for 25 to 26 years. Oh, by the way, if you have questions about anything I'm saying here, I do this blog where I put videos of Richmond City Council meetings at richmondtelegraph.org and you can, you can hear for yourself what people have said uh, there in, in complete. But uh, this pot of money, 25, 26 years, it's taken to grow up to $319,000. You propose to give him 25 years of, of accumulation of that money. Seconds. There are other developers. There are other developers in Jackson Ward. Uh, I'm further concerned because Kelvin Hansen, his business partner, is on the Economic Development Authority. This, this uh, ordinance here is, is, a, is a contract between the city of Richmond and the Economic Development Authority. Is that a conflict of interest? This is highly dubious. Uh, we should reward somebody that, he's a millionaire. He, he owns over 100 properties. He doesn't need this money, and we shouldn't give it to him. Thank you.
this association of automobile dealers felt they didn't want to pay this tax. And I figured out what my opposition to, to, uh, to this law was, is that I'm still going to have to pay the admission tax. This is a special law for businesses to do marketing to the public. And they say, oh, don't worry about it, Richmond City Council. You'll get your money back because more people will be down, downtown buying $5 hot dogs. And that 11% tax on the, on the food that, and, and you know, 1% of that was to finance the Performing Arts Center, and uh, you know, we're still paying for that. But uh, you know, this is this is uh, this is something. The current law, you know, they always say, oh, the children, we want to let children go to this stuff. The, the existing law already allows no admission taxes for children 12 and under. Uh, there's another exemption for uh, museums, botanical gardens, and zoos. So, you know, there are other alternatives that, that council could have pursued. You could have raised the age from 12 to 16 or 18, so children still could go to these wonderful events and not have to worry about paying the admission tax. Or you could, uh, you know, if you don't want to pay the tax, don't give out free tickets. Or you could uh, have a free event where everyone from the public is allowed to come. You don't have to pay any tax for free events. And imagine how many people will come out for a free event. This is, you know, this is headed up by this automotive industry. They give a lot of money to the people in the General Assembly, senators, House of Delegates, government, gubernatorial candidates, uh, Cuccinelli, you name it. They, they give it a rate 60% to Republicans. And these are the people that requested this law, number nine, that I'm urging you all to vote against. Please begin to No, this is ridiculous. This reminds me of the decision by the Supreme Court last week. Corporations are entities. So they can, they can lobby you all to create legislation that would benefit them at the expense of the general public. The sum is supposed to be so small, $15,000 uh, a year. So it's a million and a half dollars in 10 years. I want businesses to pay their fair share of the taxes. I'm going to have to continue paying this tax. If, if you want to let businesses not pay an admission tax, abolish the tax for everyone, not just businesses. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you. Uh, is there